Hey guys, Teresa here. Welcome back to my channel, Lost My Thread. I'm here today to invite you to join me on a Me Made 10x10 wardrobe challenge. Earlier in the year, I made a video talking about 24 things I wanted to do in 2024. I will pop a link to it up here and down below. In that video, I mentioned that I wanted to do a 10 by 10 wardrobe challenge using me made clothes. And there were actually quite a few people who were really interested and excited and wanted to join me. So I started a small group on Instagram where we've been chatting a little bit about it, but I wanna open this out to all of you guys. I've decided that I want to do this challenge because it's a 10 by 10 starting on the 10th of the 10th, so the 10th of October. So this is a good time for you to find out more about it, do a little planning and decide to join in if you want to. A 10 by 10 wardrobe challenge is a really super simple concept. The idea is that you pick out 10 items of clothing and those are the only items of clothing that you wear over a 10 day period. So in this case, starting on the 10th of October. Now, the thing that makes it a me made 10 by 10 for me is including at least one me made item in those 10 garments. I appreciate not everybody has a full wardrobe of me maids. And honestly, I feel like there's a whole lot of value, possibly even more value to be gotten if you only have one, two or three me made items. As far as what counts within those 10 items, you can definitely make your own decisions of how strict you want to be. I'm following what Lee of Style B said when she created this challenge back in 2015, which is to include jackets and layering pieces like outerwear and also to include shoes, but not to include accessories. So you can add additional accessories, hats and bags and scarves and jewelry. That's not included in the 10 items of clothing, but the other 10 are the only things you're gonna be wearing when you're going out in your day to day. Lee has a really good beginner formula. So if you're new to the 10 by 10 concept and you want a good place to start, she recommends having two pairs of shoes, four tops, this includes shirts and layering pieces, button downs are really useful, one dress or jumpsuit, two pairs of bottoms, which could be skirts or trousers, and then one jacket or like more of an outerwear piece. Lee started this challenge as a way for her to reduce her clothing consumption because she was buying rather than sewing clothes. But I think for us as sewists, it might not be a bad thing sometimes to take a little bit of a break away from the making and actually enjoy and appreciate the things that you are making. I think if you've ever been curious to try a capsule wardrobe, I think it's a fun way to do it. I also feel like it's a good way to maybe play around with different styles, different fashion ideas. Maybe there's something that you haven't tried before that you might like. You might find some interesting combinations of clothing that you wouldn't necessarily put together. I also feel like it's just a really great way to figure out the best way to use the memes that you have. Whatever we make is precious to us. You know, it's a really special thing. We spent our time and our energy. And if we can actually put it to its fullest potential and maybe style it in different ways, find different ways that we can actually appreciate it and enjoy it, then we're going to push our memes even further. The main reason I wanna do it honestly though is just because I feel like it seems like a fun thing to do. I, when I was little, I had paper dolls. I used to enjoy mixing and matching outfits on my paper dolls. I also had one of those fashion plates that you color in with a crayon. Anybody remember those? With fashion plates, you can be a designer. A fashion plate, fashion designer. With fashion plates, I design the hottest looks. T-shirt, blue skirt, then change a place and color too for a look that's totally new. In the UK, I know they also had one called the fashion wheel that was very similar. In my mind, it's a bit like that scene from Clueless where Cher is looking through her wardrobe of what to wear for the day. To me, I feel like planning and playing around the different 10 by 10 options is probably more fun than the actual process itself. And I have had a ton of fun just thinking about different outfit combinations and how I can mix and match things together. There are so many different ways that you can do that. So you can create like a personalized croaky, like a, a model of your body shape using my body model, other similar websites, but my body model is a free one where you can put in your dimensions and it will create a little form for you to play around with that you can then print off and draw on, or you can actually sketch on it using like a digital art program. And I had actually intended to do this 10 by 10 wardrobe challenge back in 2020. And I made a little envelope called Tiny Teresa. Inside there is my paper doll version of myself. So this is based on my proportions. So this is, I would say, a pretty accurate representation of my shape. And then I also sketched out and colored in 
all these little versions of different clothes that I had. So I know exactly what dress this is and I feel like I did a pretty doggone good attempt. But I've got all the little different options that I can try on my tiny Teresa and I actually did some photos to show you guys what they look like as you can get a bit of an idea. So that's just another way that you can do it. But the thing that I did this time around when I was trying to do a bit of planning is I actually took photos of a load of my clothes. So I hung them up on hangers and then I took photos against the wardrobe door. And then I went into a WAP site, an app called Canva. I use Canva a lot for like my thumbnails and things like that. I usually just use the free version. There's a premium version where you can actually remove the background and I did a 30 day free trial so you guys can obviously choose to do that if you want to or find a different background removal app. But I basically thought it would be fun to have like just the simple little cutouts which would be very much like the kind of share from Clueless and I could piece those things together and see how they play against each other as a part of my planning. It was really fun and I've put together a couple of options. So I basically put together two 10 by 10 outfit combinations or 10 by 10 clothing combinations, played around with 10 different options to give you a bit of an idea of how this concept works. The first 10 garments I'll show you I'm calling my Coord 10x10 because this includes a lot of the Coord sets that I've made, so tops and bottoms that coordinate together, but they also mix and match with each other and one of the things I've made uses scraps of multiple things within it, so it seemed like an obvious thing to pair together to be able to get a good number of outfits. So the first item is my peppermint wrap top by peppermint magazine designed by in the folds made in a linen fabric. I know this goes well with a lot of the other things that I've got in my wardrobe. This is my Murcott jacket. So this is a hack of the Murcott puffer vest from the Cashmere Rat Club. I hacked into a double-sided jacket so I can wear with either the pink on the outside or the green on the outside. This is made in a quilted double gauze fabric. This is a cord set that I made using a viscose linen fabric. The top is the La Brea Tee by Half Moon Atelier and the skirt is the peppermint pocket skirt designed by Paper Theory for Peppermint Magazine. This is another peppermint pocket skirt designed by Paper Theory for Peppermint Magazine in a different colored viscose linen. This is a cord set that I made using a Lady McElroy viscose linen fabric. The top is the Gilbert Top by Helen's Closet and the pants are the Pomona Pants by Anna Allen. I also included this Valdivia sweater by Lisa Threads. This is in a Canadian rib knit fabric. It's actually quite a nice warm sweatshirt. This is another La Brea tee by Half Moon Atelier. This is used using all viscose linen scraps and it's all from other projects that I've included in this 10 garment collection. And these are my tried and true light gray trainers that go with pretty much everything. I wear these so often and I decided this was the only item of footwear that I needed for this particular 10 garment collection. So let's look at the outfit combinations. So pairing the pink and the blue together, I feel like are a really nice punch of color. And I feel like wearing this jacket over the top with the green on the outside just adds a little bit of an extra dimension. And wearing these two together is really fun because the top is made with scraps from the bottoms. And when I tuck it in and pull it out a little bit, it definitely has that faux jumpsuit vibe. But you can see that it's clearly not just exactly matchy matchy. It's just a little bit more interesting for having the other fabrics on there. Clearly you can see that I enjoy this combination together. I have worn this combination together and I feel like it's good to have something if it's a little bit chilly. I feel like that Murcott jacket would work really well and I really do love all those bold colors together. I always love pink and green together, especially this really punchy, juicy pink. It's very watermelon to me and I love the combo. I also feel like this sweater over the top being this kind of like oversized loose sweater, it completely changes the look. It basically could be an outfit in and of itself, but I feel like it's just cool as an extra layering piece and it looks like I'm wearing something completely different and much more relaxed and cool. Clearly I love this combination. I have worn this combination many times. I feel like it works really well. There are also scraps of this skirt around the neckline and the armhole of this top. So again, it works really well as a combination. I think it's really fun to wear it there as like a little kind of secret nod to using the scraps. And another version of the Valdivia sweater over the top. I like that these colors are a bit more similar, so it's a bit more of a muted palette. Again, as you can see, using the scraps from this skirt in the top means that these two are gonna work really well together. They look like a bit of a faux dress, and I think they're a really cute combo. Now this is something that's a bit different for me that I'd be really curious to try. Again, I really like the pink and green together. That in and of itself is great, but I would actually really like to try this with the Gilbert top over the top as a layer. So it unbuttoned just over the top is like a cool extra element. I feel like that would really work. 
this is a combination that I really need to try. I don't know why I've not worn this Gilbert shirt with this pocket skirt before. I've worn it with the green version, which works really well. So style-wise, I know that it works. But I feel like the pink would be even better because it would bring out the pink of the shirt. And I think this is one that would work really well with the green version outside of the jacket there. I feel like it would just add a little bit extra color. This is a combination that I have worn a lot. So I do often wear this cohort set together very much like a faux jumpsuit seeker pajamas 100%. So comfortable but looks together. But I also really love it with this sweater over the top. It is very cool and relaxed. This is my ultimate airplane outfit. So in those 10 garments, I did only include one pair of shoes because I felt like it would work with all of the outfits, but that's not always going to be the case. I felt like those outfits in general were very kind of spring summer color palette, and I wanted to play around with something that felt a little bit more autumnal. You cannot go wrong with having a basic tee in a 10 by 10 wardrobe challenge. They are really useful. And so I wanted to go with the Concord tee by Cashmerette in this really beautiful, rich orange cotton jersey. I also really wanted to include the top that I'm wearing today. This is the Anthea blouse by Anna Allen in a really beautiful strawberry print viscose linen. A button-up shirt is also incredibly useful in a 10 by 10 challenge because you can wear it in so many different ways. This is the Olia shirt by Paper Theory. It's made in a really beautiful woven striped cotton fabric. It's a lightweight fabric. It's got like raspberry and teal stripes. I feel like the photo of me in it is maybe a little bit closer to what it looks like in real life, but it's very changeable whether it looks more teal or more, more raspberry depending on the light. And these are my bootcut jute jeans by Closet Core Patterns. These are made in a stretch needle cord fabric. Very 70s style, very high-waisted. Again, I feel like sometimes these look a little bit more green or a little bit more brown depending on the light or depending what you pair with them. This is another one of my scrappy makes. So this is using all different corduroy scraps, including the jute jeans that I just showed you. This is the West End jacket designed by Cami Made Patterns for Peppermint Magazine. I hacked this, added a lot of additional style lines to be able to use different fabrics. I haven't actually included a ton of the fabrics in this collection that are from this jacket, but it's definitely a way that I know that I can pair it with other things in my wardrobe. This is a hacked version of the Maya Sotis dress by Deer and Doe. I hacked it to make it fully buttoned down and also to make it long sleeve with cuffs. This is made in a stretch needle cord fabric. It's definitely more of a tealy color than it's showing, so a bit more of a greeny blue shade, but a really nice bright color. This is the Marlowe sweater by True Bias. This is a like grandfather style cardigan with a drop sleeve. It definitely works well with a big full sleeve as a layer over the top. I feel like the color works well with the other things. This is a really unusual fabric where it's a rib knit on the outside of the fabric and then it's more just like a cotton jersey on the inside. It's a really unique fabric I got from Guthrie and Ghani. It's quite warm as well. And these are my bell bottom version of the Jew jeans by Closet Core Patterns. As you can see, there's a nice big full bell at the bottom. This one is full on 70s, and this is a stretch cotton twill fabric. And I had to include my everyday trainers because I know I wear these all the time and they work well with so many of these outfits. I also wanted to include a pair of boots just to make things a little bit more autumnal feeling and give them a bit more of an edge. So this is very much a comfortable casual look with the t-shirt and the corduroys with the trainers and the Marlowe cardigan would be a really nice layer over the top if needed and just bring another little color dimension. This one is a little bit out there potentially. So I've got the same t-shirt and corduroys which I know will work well together with the boots. I think that will be a great combination. But I was curious to see if I actually took my Maya Sotis dress, unbuttoned it all the way and wore it more as like an over shirt. So like a duster, an oversized shirt to wear over the top. I feel like it could be a pretty cool combo and it would also allow me to stretch that dress a little bit more in my wardrobe. And this top and flares with the trainers I know work really well together. That's an easy combination for me that I've worn before. But I was curious if I added the extra element of the shirt over the top but unbuttoned, worn more as a layer. These are not necessarily colors that I would go for to put together but I think they really work and I feel like they would feel more like a kind of a 90s vibe. So like the 90s version of the 70s rather than the 70s itself. And I think it'd be really fun. And this is another slightly experimental idea. And this is wearing the Adrian blouse unbuttoned but more as a layer over the top of this t-shirt. The colors work well together and it would definitely work well with the trousers. And I felt like trainers would make the whole thing feel like a cool, just like relaxed, comfortable, casual look. 
So this is actually the outfit that I've been wearing today, so I can say that it definitely works. I really like how the red on the trousers brings out the red, the vibrant strawberries on the top, and the trainers just kind of tone the whole thing down. I will say I also have worn this with the Marlowe sweater, and I wasn't sure if the color would be a little bit too much, too much red, but it actually works really well. I think this would also work really well with that same cardigan shirt combo, but actually layered over the corduroys with boots. I also really love wearing this shirt partly buttoned up and then tied at the front. It creates like a crop top look. And if I roll up the sleeves, I feel like that's a really great look in general. It works well with these higher waisted corduroys. With the trainers, it's a very relaxed feel. And I feel like that slouchy cardigan over the top would just be like chef's kiss. And if I'm thinking about a long walk, walking through the crunchy leaves, definitely this shirt buttoned up with the corduroys and the boots, this jacket over the top definitely gives that vibe. And the red of the pants would really bring out the more pink color in the top, either just buttoned up or buttoned and then tied at the front with more of that cropped look. I definitely think this jacket over the top as well would be really fun to bring all those colors together. For sure, I know that this dress works really well with tights and boots. I'm wearing it with black ones in the photos, but equally it would work great with some brown ones. I hope that gives you a good idea of how you can take 10 garments and stretch that out over a 10 day period. I feel like the limitations really do stretch your creativity. And for myself, it was interesting and fun to play around with some unique style options. The obvious way that you can also think about different combinations is to try on clothes and do a little bit of like playing dress up in your own wardrobe. So I have some tips if you are thinking about joining in in this Me May 10 by 10 wardrobe challenge. The number one thing I think it's really important is to look at the weather forecast. Now, obviously the weather can change, so it's probably useful to include items that are maybe a little bit warmer and a little bit cooler, depending on what you get on the day to day. But at least if you can look at the forecast, you get a little bit of an idea. I think you also need to think about what you're gonna be doing over those 10 days. So are you gonna be working? Are you gonna be going out in the evenings? Are you gonna be just relaxing? home and pick clothes that are going to suit what you need them for. In general, I think it's a good idea to start with some of the basic items that you know you wear really frequently that do pair well with other items in your wardrobe. Start with those as your kind of staples and build it from there. If you want to join me this October and do this me made 10 by 10 wardrobe challenge, it's very easy. I'm not making like an official challenge with prizes or anything. I did consider it, but I feel like this is something that's really more like a personal challenge. And to me, the prize is finding out how you can wear your own clothes and love your me made wardrobe more. So all you need to do is to pick out 10 items from your wardrobe, including at least one me made item. And then starting on the 10th of October, wear those 10 items of clothing together as 10 different outfit combinations. If you wanna share what you're doing and let me and other people in the community see, please use the hashtag me made 10 by 10. I also do have an Instagram group. If you are interested in joining in and you maybe don't wanna post on your feed or in your stories, but you wanna share with other people who are taking part, send me a DM over on Instagram. I lost my thread over there as well. I can invite you into my group. So that way on the 10th of October, when we're ready to go, we can all start sharing what we're making. I think leading up to the 10th of October, it'd be fun for us to also plan what we're experimenting with, what different outfit combinations we think we're going to be using together and we can cheer each other on as a small community. If you do share on Instagram, like I said, please use the hashtag me made 10 by 10 and tag me so that I'm sure that I can see it. If you do not go into the post and actually tag me, I don't always get to see those things. And I would love to see if you guys are joining in. I'm going to be sharing a video at the end of the 10 by 10 challenge, just to talk a little bit about what the process was like for me, what outfit combinations I finally went with. And if I'd be curious to try doing a 10 by 10 again. If you have done a 10 by 10 wardrobe challenge before, I would love to get your hints and tips down in the comments down below. Recently, Sarah of Naughty Gnome Crafts put up her own video of a Me Made 10 by 10, which I will put up here and down below if you wanna check hers out. What I love about this is we are all gonna have our own unique styles and our own choices. And that means that all of our 10 by 10s are gonna be really special to us. I would love if you guys do join in. If you enjoyed today's video, if you are curious to try it, please do give me a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you wanna hear how this challenge went, if you wanna see other videos, and I'll see you guys very soon. Bye.